go. It no, bangs on the table. And it's short and my and it's set up a bit more, don't I? Are you getting neck pain supporting your medal? Hello everyone, welcome to Road CC. This is the third in our series of videos about Red Bull time lapse. And the final, because we get to find out how you did, because you've got a medal. What, this old thing? Yeah, do yeah. you want to tell us all about it? This signifies the fact that I stayed at time lapse long enough <laughs> for them to be putting the medals out. Very good. So that's good. How it went, I've made a video about that. Oh, have you? Yeah, so let's watch that now. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, morning everybody. Welcome to OTC. We're on the M3 uh, in the murky early morning, heading down to um, Virginia Water to start the Red Bull time lapse. I'm doing it solo. Got my pit man, Stu. Say hello, Stu. Morning. Morning. And um, weather forecast is uh, challenging. My fitness is suboptimal, but we've got a really good pit setup. We've got a really good tent, we've got a stove, kettle. We can make coffee or bacon, so we might win that battle even if we lose the war. So, right, let's get on with it, let's get there. Wake up, baby, all the stars are shining bright. Yeah, we should stay up so that we can look at them all night just keep holding me don't let me go everything's so magical all i need is you tonight if i shut my eyes keeping them closed all of the senses exposed you and me under the sky let's stay Pit check, this is us, number 258. This is Stu. Lovely. And this is our house. We've got the easy, easy up from Road CC. Got our wheelbarrow for Stu to give me a lift back to the car in later. Uh, there's my bike, my Merida. We've got some food. Stu's bought his pot noodles there. Got a stove for cooking coffee and pasta and stuff. Got a big thing of fuel. Uh, my camping box from the shed, which has got some useful things in it. Some chairs we can sleep in later. I've also got a mattress down there somewhere. And that's it. Looking good. We're ready to go. Look out for each other. We've got a few solo riders out there. There's about 14 or 15 of them. So they're doing the whole 25 hours. You're in teams of four. Just talk to the teams around you. If you need any help, then come and find some of the race crew and we'll assist as much as we can. Let's get it. Let's get you through around the course, nice and safe, and then home at the end of the day. That's me done, thank you. two hours in. Uh, as you can see the weather's challenging. I was having a good time there, having a good time. Brilliant. We'll stay out for another hour. Come in for quick snacks. You got stews made for me in the kitchen. Um, but yeah, I'm a bit damp as you can see. But uh, I suppose like half a G that's really good. It's keeping me really warm. That's good. Right. I wanna run away with you Tell me that you want it too Just wanna be alone with you Alright, ready? <laughs> 
<laughs> Good mate, you? Yeah. Um, there might be a little bit of heavy rain mixed in with that light rain we were coming. <laughs> I'm soaking wet. That actually looks really warm. So it's not too bad. Yeah, everyone keeps saying that, but I'm just freezing still here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's three hours done. Maybe 90k. So uh, I should do 700 and something k then, yeah? Yeah, why not? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Sounds like a massive lap. <laughs> you want to sit in a chair, it's the mic, and then make it really soak the mic. And I don't want to take all this stuff off because I'm going to work for the next next three hours, I think. Just going to leave it as it is. Hopefully, it will dry up by then. Six o'clock, they reckon. Six o'clock. Ten, it's four ten, isn't it? Um, and yeah, the first six hours were like properly, properly horrible. <laughs> it's absolutely soaking wet, and I had to strip naked and get into my sleeping bag <laughs> after six hours to warm up because all my clothes were completely sodden. It's thinned out a bit, actually. You noticed that? I've been watching. Be fair, I've been in the warm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you, mate. Which so I'm currently in fifth. Yep. That's a respectable mid table, but it's a long way to go. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, onwards. Well, not onwards yet. I'm gonna have another half an hour sitting here. <laughs> in the paradise, we can work it out. gone three and then it's gone back to two so somewhere between two and three it's complicated uh, I've just done the power hour which is like the one where you get double laps uh, and I overslept a bit and um, actually it worked out quite well because I was quite fresh I uh, got there just in time and did seven laps so I was really happy with that because seven laps is the same as I do when I was in a team uh, so yeah I'm absolutely bad now so then I might go and have a bacon sandwich. I'm just catching a bit of the glamour of 24 hour racing Lovely, and you yeah. like drying your gloves on the uh... Yeah, it's very hot. Lovely job. Dave. Morning. It isn't morning, <laughs> is it? Well, it's quarter to three. It's still dark. Ah, <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> Sport! <laughs> Marlon McGee 
has overtaken Gemma Briley Rutter for first place in the women's competition, and they are fighting each other for the podium. She's only four laps behind me, so I can't sit on my chair for the remainder of the time available if I want to keep fourth place, otherwise she'll nick it off me. <sighs> Which is a shame. This is my final lap, the last one I'm doing to consolidate my fourth place finish out of 12. It's going to be about 480 key kilometers in the end. But anyway, bits of it being fun. Wow, I think you did very well. And I think Stu did well as well, Stu didn't was, he? Stu was excellent. Was he good yeah. at cooking bacon? Very good at cooking bacon. He went AWOL at one point and was in the warm. But I you know, we'll, oh. we'll gloss over that. That's fine. Yeah, it was dark and cold. And um, I got more sleep than him in the end. Yeah. So there's okay. that. Yeah, I did, yeah. I wouldn't want to wake you up. Uh, no, but it, was, it worked out all right, actually. I mean, I had a strategy. Yeah. Mostly I kept to it. One point I forgot to set my alarm okay. and slept for an hour and 15 minutes instead of 15 minutes. But you were saying you went into the power hour quite fresh because that was, of that. Exactly, that was before the power hour. So when I got into that, I was feeling really good. And so I could hammer around with some people that are quite a lot quicker than me. Sivakov, the Ineos pro? No, not, not um, anyone that quick. Now, he came past me near the end of the race when he was being filmed and posing uh, for the camera. Right. Yeah. He was overtaking me, obviously, but he was also overtaking everyone at the front of the race. Oh, gosh. Really okay. making it look quite easy. Uh, he, he, uh, he, was pr he was probably like doing a bit of a sprint and then just wiping his brow and not Exactly breathing. so. So he did the fastest lap, I think, 9.31, mine were about kind of 15 minutes okay. around there. But he was in the team and you did the solo and you got fourth. I got fourth place. So, I was happy with that. Not um, I did about mm, about 19 hours of riding, I think, in total. So I was off the bike a fair bit. And actually, if, if I'd have been challenging for first place, then I would have had to cut that six hours off the bike down to about one hour off the bike. Ooh. I don't really think, for me, that was possible. Do you know what you did in terms of mileage? I did 300 miles, almost exactly. So yeah, it's a good day, good day out. Good, Yeah. and my phone's ringing. <laughs> <laughs> Mummy! Your mum's calling you. Damn it, Linda! <laughs> okay, so your DHB kit, how was that? Yeah, kit-wise it all worked out pretty well. I took a lot of kit, because it was going to rain, and it yeah. did rain. Oh, it did. Assistantly <laughs> for a long time at the start of the race. So at the start I was wearing that DHB Aeron Equinox jersey, the orange mm. one, and I was wearing this, which is my favourite thing ever now, which was that... Um, Polisag Alpha Gilet. Now, I didn't have a rain jacket, I didn't take one, because mm. I didn't think I'd need one, because I'd be warm enough at the start of the race when it was gonna be wet. Yep. So I just wore this and the jersey, and this is absolutely brilliant. Kept me really warm all the way through the first mm. six hours. By about hour nine, when I was completely soaking wet through, <laughs> and had to get off the bike and uh, sit in my sleeping bag for a little while, Yeah. it was, um, it was time for a change then. But even then, you can basically just shake this out and then it's ready to wear again. Oh, it just doesn't hold any water at all, it's brilliant. Um, so I wore this till about 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh wow. Because it, by that time it got a bit warm. But until then I was, you know, I wore all night and it was brilliant, fantastic, so I love that. Um, the shorts and the, the longs were really good as well. Yeah, didn't have any problems with my um, with my bottom. No, no. It's always good to know. I was using a, one of those Cane Creek suspension seat posts as well on my bike. The oh, little, yes. You know, the little E silver yeah. ones. That's really good. 
Was that good for the longer distance? It was, it was excellent. Anything you'd change for next uh, year? Yeah, presuming that you're going to go back and do the solo again next year, anything you'd change? I'd put mud guards on my bike. Yeah. If it was going to rain. Yeah. I didn't have them and I thought, oh, I don't know what, I'll be sitting behind people all the time and so oh. I'll still get wet. But really what happens is when you're in the solo category, because you're going significantly slower than other people, you don't really get into a group that much. No. At least not at the start of the race, because no. everyone's kind of going for it. Yeah. Um, and at the end, you tend to like pick up the groups a bit more, because yeah. everyone's slowed down a little bit. But by that time, it had dried out. Do you know that mudguards are more aero? I heard that mudguards are more aero. Yeah, that's science And I as don't well. believe it. I, yeah. <laughs> I refuse to believe it. It's I do when, it's, when they're on my winter bike. <laughs> I'll believe it. That's fine by that's me. It's rubbish. So yeah, I changed that. Um, the bike worked. The bike worked really well. Um, I had a strategy. I tried to keep to it. I pretty much managed it. I wasn't sick. So um, your nutrition was quite good then. It was pretty good. I still need. I find that I still need a certain amount of time off the bike mm. to actually just process yeah. what I've eaten. Yeah. I can't keep going all the time. It doesn't work for me. So I have to do that. I have to have time off. So. I don't think I'm ever going to be like pushing for first place in a race like that because no. I just can't keep it going for as long as other people can. But, but you know, the, that's, be, that's the beta the fuel, beta fuel was good. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, tasty. It's all right. Yeah, and uh, it kept me going. And it was something. It was something I could keep taking all yeah. the way all the way through the race. Yep. Um, and bacon. Yeah. Also. <laughs> bacon. <laughs> bacon was good. Yeah. Three a.m. bacon and chocolate off. buttons. Mm. I ate a lot of them. So that concludes our series on the Red Bull time lapse, which has been a lot of fun, actually. A lot of fun More for fun me. than I thought. Yeah. yeah, a lot of fun for you, just sitting there chatting yeah, while I was nice. doing the hard work. Um, if you've got any questions about the race or anything that I did, ask them in the comments below. We'll get them answered for you. And if you'd like to see us do any exciting challenges, then leave suggestions in the comments yeah. below. And we'll definitely do them, except if they look really hard. Or they're really expensive. Okay, bye.